First off, defining the concept of ethical hacking, ethical hacking at its core is using the techniques and tools, the approaches, the attacks that an attacker would use to identify vulnerabilities, document the vulnerabilities, and plan remediation. Many times, folks that aren't as familiar with security penetration tests or security analysis just assume that all security experts, especially IT security experts, are the same, that they use the same techniques, the same tools. They assume an auditor is the same as an analyst. They assume an ethical hacker uses the same tools as those folks as well. And that's simply not the case. Ethical hacking is different in this core function in that it uses the exact same methodology, the exact same tools that a hacker would use. Someone outside frequently the company, someone out of control of the company to actually understand the network, penetrate, compromise, but do it in a way that's ethical, meaning that they document this, that they record the steps, they record the breaches, they record the parameters that they've used so that later on analysts and auditors can come and look at those results and determine what things may need to be done in the future to help prevent similar attacks, but from an unethical hacker down the road. This is a key difference. This key approach difference is really what separates this from anything else out there. When we talk about ethical hacking as well, one thing to remember is that ethical hackers follow specific rules and guidelines, and these are really, really important. The core rules of ethical hacking, first and foremost, do no harm. Do not destroy assets. Do not wreck networks. Do not deny service and, in, and actually affect real use of systems. Do not lock people out in a way that's not part of the plan. So doing no harm is really the big distinction between a cracker and an ethical hacker. A cracker or a true attacker, as part of their attack, may want to do harm, whether it's compromise sensitive data, deny service to legitimate users, destroy assets, and so forth. Ethical hacking differs there in that, typically, there's no destruction and no harm done. Ethical hacking is also really rooted in boundaries, understanding what systems can and cannot be attacked. For example, an online database that's critical to customer data or critical to transactions, that kind of database should never be attacked by an ethical hacker unless it's part of the ethical hacker's boundaries, unless that database is specifically included. Most businesses that are being run 24 hours, seven days, most businesses will not want an ethical hacker to approach any critical business systems because it could simply impact business. So understanding what those boundaries are up front and then honoring those boundaries is absolutely critical. Countermeasures are not part of the ethical hacking process. As you're examining networks and footprinting and determining vulnerabilities and installing compromises, that process doesn't include at every stage, well, I wonder how I would defend against this. That's not part of ethical hacking. Ethical hacking is getting in, finding the vulnerabilities, documenting as you go, certainly, but countermeasures are usually considered only after an entire ethical hacking process is complete. After you're successful, after you've compromised vulnerabilities, after you've actually owned the network, so to speak, that's when you worry about, I wonder how this company, my company, any company could protect against this. That's when that research happens. Sometimes it's a natural outcropping of the attack itself, and that's great. Document that, but do not focus on countermeasures during ethical hacking. All of this should be in agreement, written agreement, with whoever is the subject of this ethical hacking process. If you're a consultant and you've been brought in to determine vulnerabilities and risk exposure for a company, getting agreement on what are the critical systems, what are the boundaries, what are the targets, what are the areas of concern is really important and it has to be done in advance. It can't be done during the process. You can't stumble across customer database number 72 
and raise your hand and ask, is it okay if I hack this database? That's not the proper approach to ethical hacking. Ethical hacking is understanding these systems are off limits. Those systems are in bounds. These systems are the systems that we're most concerned about, or the data over here is the ones we're, is the data we're most concerned about. And documentation is absolutely critical. I recommend that you thoroughly document every step, every process, every keystroke you make, frequently using things like Camtasia to record video or getting screenshots, having a notebook where you jot down notes as you're doing things, commands you run, data you get, and so forth. Saving all of that in a special place on your hard drive or on the network, having a nice backup of it, that's absolutely crucial as well both to ensure that you capture everything, every part of the attack, all of the compromises, success and failure and so forth, and also for personal liability reasons to ensure that you show exactly what you did do and exactly what you did not do.